the Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. It's Jesse Mug Day. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. On the STP. Hello. Jesse Mug Day. Steve's got his Jesse Mug. I got my no mug. And what do you got, Jesse? I got shambolic. What a loser. That's yeah. not a Jesse yeah. Mug. Yeah. Can Why'd you he... say it for me? Shambolic. <laughs> I like this mug. Oh, I like it too. Oh, we got a Steve Mug here from Maddie. Oh, Maddie's oh Maddie's Hey, look, it's Steve Maddie's and he's mug. happy. Yeah. Here, take it away now. There it is. Oh, hey, there's, that hey. face. there's that face. Hey. Everybody listening. Yes, we have plenty of mugs. STPNshop.ca. Um, and listen, we Whoa, got, what else do they have? We also have at <laughs> STPN.ca, uh, Jesse, um, some retro merch for Pride. Yeah. And all of our proceeds are going towards Get Real, which we love. The Get Real movement here in uh, Toronto. Um, and there is, there's so much uh, about this that you, you're going you're gonna to love. But let's, let's get to the fun stuff, which is the Pride merch that's going in. I teased it on Friday. Deep Dish Threetsa is oh! back. Deep so dish if you hit up sdpnshop.ca, you can get a deep dish threats a t-shirt or hoodie. Boy, that's uh, throwing it back. It has returned. This is from 2015. What was this? Something happened with Jason Spezza and Steve made a deep dish threats. A I don't remember what it was at all. I think it was Chicago winning their third cup. Because they do deep dish pizza and they won the cup oh. three times, so it's deep dish threetsa. I thought it was uh, Jason Spezza related. No, I don't why? Because it ends in Z Z A. Yeah, you friggin' Italian <laughs> racist person! How <laughs> dare you? So it was Chicago. I know that's their, not the word. Their third cup in in 2015, and you just said deep dish threetsa. I said deep dish threetsa, and you and Adam hated it a lot. It was bad. Yeah. So I talked about how much I liked it a lot, and the audience went. Two of the three are uncomfortable. Let's roll with it, <laughs> as they do with everything. Yes, and it became merch, and we sold that for a while, and then it went away, and now it is back. And if you purchase any of our merch on our entire site this month, it will go towards the Get Real movement and uh, towards Rainbow Railroad. So we're just going to throw it to our 5K fundraiser at the at the time of our run. And speaking of our 5K fundraiser, uh, hit the link in the description if you want to donate or go to stpn.ca slash pride. All the links are there. We have reached 71% of our goal. Oh, we need to up the goal. So our goal was... Uh, can, we meet, can we hit the goal first? No. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's hit no. the goal. Let's hit the goal first. Up it! Uh, we're trying to raise uh, $2,500. Yep. We're at uh, $1,764. So we're almost there, 71%. So we just need a little bit more, people. Thank you. It's going to a great cause. And we got a lot of suggestions on how we should do our virtual 5K. And easily, the funniest one that I read on Discord was that for Steve's portion of the 5K, we make him do it in the kayak. (laughs) I don't want to do it. So Steve's infamous kayak that you uh, basically bought and you put it on top of your car and then gifted to a friend you never used. I I put it on top of not my car because I never had a roof rack. That was the whole problem. So we get you in the kayak. We get producer Drew out there to film you doing one at least 1K in your kayak. Do you have? I'm doing 5K. Do you have the kayak? <laughs> no, you were no. supposed to help me get it. Yeah, you see, so you want my truck, right? I want your friendship <laughs> and your truck. Everybody makes fun of me for having this truck until they need something moved. And then they're like, hey, so, <laughs> hey, can I borrow it? With your big stupid truck and those straps that go like this? Yeah. I don't yeah. know how to do it. Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, the, you know? Yeah, I, I got you. So we got to drive out to where it is. Oh, God. It's going to be a long day, but we'll do it. A long day of friendship. A long day of friendship. We're going to go out there and we're going to rescue that damn guy. Can can that drive be part of the 5K as well? Because it's going to be a long fucking drive. Well, it's a lot longer than 5K, pal. Oh, man. So I think what's that? It's two and a half hours away. Yep. One way. Oh, my God. There's the Steve needs to 5K uh, his kayak, and then that'll be your portion. So I don't know if we can actually get that done. We got to find a lake, and you got to figure out the kayak situation. Then the other suggestion was that um, we skate Mm. 5K. Oh. I thought that was very creative as well. I I think that'd be great. Yeah. That'd be fun. I don't know how many laps is that around a hockey ring. Well, we can find. I'm sure. Listen, we got a lot of math people that listen. I'm sure somebody could tell us. 
Yeah, I'm sure we could do it. We could figure it out. But yeah, those Ross are a couple Parker suggestions. Really, yeah. So keep sending them in. We need to figure out how we're going to do this before the uh, end of the month and before uh, we can do our virtual 5K. Right. Yeah. SDPNshop.ca. Uh, get some merch. It's all going to a great cause. Uh, SDPN.ca slash pride. All the info or just hit the link in the description right now. I also just want to quickly let you know, and this is we'll, we'll get into this more a little bit later, but uh, Skip the Juices has jumped on board with us. Ooh. And they're providing tonight a countrywide did somebody uh, say oh, yeah. hey. There it is. Let's go. <laughs> Dang, I didn't know you had that on the hotkey. Um, I do things sometimes. Uh, twenty $10 off a, an order of $20 or more. No restrictions countrywide. Wherever you can get Skip, this applies to you. The code is DANGLE10. On whatever you order. Whatever you order, wherever you order it from, it doesn't matter. DANGLE10. $10 off, $20 or more. First 1,500 people tonight. We'll get it. Uh, it may. Uh, it, it, Did somebody say? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to use it today because it's for the Stanley Cup Finals, and then we may or may not have another one for you for Thursday's game on Wednesday's show. Just throwing that out. Mm, wow. So, yeah. Did it a third time. That's right. Oh. oh, oh. Come, Je- uh, you, you want, wow. Did that, somebody there it is. Say All right. Yeah. Wow. That was really <laughs> slow. Okay. So. I mean, listen, uh, we could start with a few different things. Obviously, the news this morning is that Cole Caulfield has signed a gigantic extension for an unbelievable price with the Montreal Canadiens. Eight years, $7.85 million. This is a fantastic deal for the Montreal Canadiens. I hate that deal a big old bunch, which should tell you how good it is. Why do you hate it, Steve? (laughs) Uh, Because it makes the Habs easily better and will allow them to compete for a long time. Cole Caulfield's career high in points is 43. Yep. His career high in points is 43. His career high in goals is 26. He scored the fewest amount of... uh, He scored the least amount of goals of any 50 goal scorer in NHL history. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I, I'd love to chirp the guy. He's going to get there. Of course he is. He's going to get there. No problem. I got no we, worries about No, that. can we just pretend that he's bad for a minute? No. So Steve, this is guy in, in well, okay. Uh, oh, here, wait, let me method act. I'm Dominic Ducharme. <laughs> scratch this man. I'm going to scratch, scratch him. this man. Um, he's going to go to Laval. Steve, he's bad. He's a career minus 35 oh, in 123 yeah. games. That would probably put him as best hab over the last two years. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he's he's great, man. He is. He's, that's such a... But I was looking up his uh, stats as soon as that deal got signed. Um, and the funniest one that I came across has nothing to do with his NHL career. Um, he scored 30 goals in 31 games at the University of Wisconsin the year before he joined the Habs. Any idea who was number two or... What the second highest goal total on that team was? I have no idea. 12. Wow. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Holy shit. Ooh. 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 Yeah, kid's a little good. Kid's a little good. He also uh, has a brother named Brock Caulfield who looks exactly like him, and I didn't know that. Brockfield. Brockfield, who plays with Carolina prospect Ch- uh, Cruz Lucius. That's such a great name. Cruz Lucius. I thought it was Chaz Lucius. That would be even better. That's the kind of name that if if you're like talking to somebody at the bar and, and they're like, what's your name? And you're like, Cruz, Cruz Lucius. Cruz Lucius. They, they're like, no, what's your real name? Yeah. They don't be camp. Your I, ID. Yeah. And if I saw that, if we were like, if we were doing game over applications, you know, um, and somebody sent in their name was Cruz Lucius, I'd be like, I, I think we have to throw this resume yeah. away. We This person is not accepted. Okay, but like, what's on your health card? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, you break your leg, like, and you... What, how do you card. sign your check? Yeah. Uh, don't let don't let me see Tom Johnson. Yeah, right. You Cruz don't call Lucius. yourself Cruz Lucius and pull out Tom Johnson. What do you think? Old Tommy John. Hey, listen, the Montreal Canadiens are going to be a team on the rise, and I think... It's uh, going to be hard for Leaf fans this this year alone. Now I've been beating this drum a long time. Uh, the the Florida Panthers pick that they have, the uh, Ben Sherrod pick, is Ugh. falling precipitously. However, they still have first, two first round picks. They've got three in the fourth and two in the fifth round. Um, but they also have just uh, they've got some contracts that they need to move on from. Okay. Okay. So like you know you got a you got another four years of Josh Anderson. I don't think they're going to have a uh, problem. Now, 
why would Josh Anderson to me is annoying because like people are like, ah, he's be, he'd be a great leaf. He's only good against the Leafs. Um, that's so so if you take that away from him you you're taking away his entire career that's so partially true um Mike Hoffman another year at four and a half million Josh Anderson had 21 goals last year no I know what Adam said how many of those were against the Leafs <laughs> not all 21 <laughs> 15 15 not all 21 Man, okay and Josh, the year before I believe he had 19 Josh Anderson is tantalizing he's got the size He's got the hands sometimes. He's physical. He like the Leafs have guys who or or in in throughout the Dubas era had guys that were big for nothing. A right? lot of big for nothing. Like who name some big for nothing guys? The first Justin one in the Hall is big for nothing. Martin Marincin was big for nothing. Yeah, big for nothing. Cody Cece was big for nothing. Basically everyone who they let play the right side. Uh Engvall was big for big for nothing. Mikhaev was a little big for nothing. Like and like and that's not to, corner, to say though. that's not to say McKayev's a bad player. Yeah, it's just to say uh, you know you look at his height and weight and you go, oh look how big he is. No, 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 that doesn't factor into him as a player. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it doesn't make him tougher or like harder to hit or something like that. Like he's just big because he is. Josh Anderson's contract's probably two million dollars too rich, maybe a million too rich. Yeah, but he's still a good player. He's a good player. Yeah, and 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 the thing is, yeah, the thing and about Josh Anderson is he could be a great player. I really believe in that. That's I think. Set. I think when you're 29, you kind of are who you are in terms of a professional athlete. But I, I look at a player like Josh Anderson. I look how these playoffs are going. I'm like, Josh Anderson would be amazing in these playoffs. It's it's a copycat league and. I don't think there's an exec out there who's not looking at this these playoffs and going, we need to get tougher. In Montreal's yeah. run to the finals a couple years ago, he had six points in 22 games. Yeah, but what's his impact per 60 yeah, I, for being he, Josh Anderson? And he also single-handedly won one of those games in the conference final. Yeah. Like, that's that's who he is. He is the best player on the ice or invisible. It's, it, it is a, that's the weird thing with Josh Anderson. <laughs> yeah. Now, I wondered with him, he has played for... Like the Columbus teams that he played for were highly defensive. Uh, he also didn't get along great with Torts, but he had some good years there. That's including. so weird. He's the only one. Yeah, and he's never scored over fifty points in his entire career in a season. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering. Okay, do you take so? What's Michael Bunting's number going to be at? Let me just ask you. This. Oh, what do you think? Four and a half, five and a half? That's so tough. I feel like he spent a lot of money. He's also going to get screwed by fucking Gary in the salary. Yeah, because the salary cap's not going. So up. We'll get nobody, to nobody's going to be willing to give him the money that he should have been making. But I think it's a little shorter term deal for Bunting. Like, like I don't think he does the hymen. Like a three year, twelve million, like four million. Yeah, something I could like that. That's not about right. Doing five years at three and a half. What do you take? Do or you four take times four? Okay. Do you take Bunting at that number that you guys just gave me? Either of your numbers. Mm -hmm. okay, I like did the four. short. Steve did the long. Okay. Do you take that for a guy who? The last couple of years, 63 points in his first year as a Leaf, 49 last year, both times 23 goals. Do you take that? E given that those numbers are slightly inflated because of who he's playing with, and I get that, mm -hmm. but you have to be able to play with them. Do you take that or do you do you make a trade for Josh Anderson? You get bunting for free. It's just cost you the money on the cap or Josh Anderson, which I think you probably actually could get with a you might actually be able to get Josh Anderson for free, too. Uh, are we doing the comparison? Because. I'm asking. I'm just. I'm just asking when you're wise. Because I want to go through. Talking the about the least makes me tremendously depressed. Why? <laughs> well, just. I'm, I'm excited. Are you not excited? I'm. I'm excited. But okay. Here's. Here's what it I'm is. Du Dubis. Dubis has been so predictable for so long, and now this new guy comes in, and I don't know what to. Think I'm excited. About. That's great. No, it is exciting. But I'm usually able to go. Okay, I think they're going to do this based on this, this, and this. And now I'm just like, I don't know. I so what no would idea. what would you do? So I'm asking about Josh. Who would you take? Would you take Josh Anderson at five and a half? No, Bunting. For four more years or Bunting? Bunting, Scarborough. Go Leafs. But also player-wise. And also player-wise. Okay. Jesse. I think, yeah, because I think my uh, Josh Anderson's contract is a little too rich. Rich, but right? I think they're both serviceable players in, their, in different ways. There's, there's a deal to be made for Anderson, and I think it's going to involve two overpaid players who are still decent enough NHL players or salary retention. Yeah. You know, and then you get his contract down to kind of where it should be. I, I wonder I if Josh if Anderson's Habs, a fit with the Leafs. Honestly, do the Habs have a slot for 
Uh, retained salary. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have anybody retained right now. So yeah, they would Ooh. have a slot. Okay. They just have a uh, Mr. Price on LTIR, and then they'll fix uh, everything else come everybody. regular season. I, but yeah, no retained salary, so they got a bunch of slots. I wonder with a guy like Josh Anderson around at a, a salary retained thing, like just like just fl- slot him in on the lease for a second. <laughs> Not that there's no. any link at all. There's no link at all. Please don't tweet this that there was a link and then I'm making things well, but whatever. But I I see a guy like that. And you, you talk about single-handedly winning a conference final game on his own, right? Wouldn't he be great? Wouldn't you, can't you see a Matthews, Marner, Anderson line that's formidable? No. You can't? No, because, uh, like, I just can't. Here's, here's what's screwing me up about this godforsaken hockey team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could see that line tearing it up in the regular season, and then what? Well, I'd like to see. I'd like to see what the Matthews Martyr line. We've never seen the Matthews Martyr line in the playoffs with size on their line. Hyman, that's not size. He's a big guy. No, he's a big. That's guy. not what. Yeah. Well, okay. what size? Okay, no, I'm talking about size, and I'm talking about like, yeah, Zach Hyman's not going to throw bone crushing hits. He's he's a fucking pain in the ass. He's a great player. He's a gritty player. He's, he went and did all the dirty things, and I get all that. He's a better player than Josh Anderson in every way, shape, and form. For sure. And gets paid the same, I think. And gets paid the exact same. Yeah, a hundred percent. But that's not what we're asking here. I'm asking about a guy who's, um, like, and forgive the comparison here because there is no comparison. But he's like Tom Wilson light or much well, that's, lighter. That's what everyone thought when they were signing these deals, only to discover there's only one Tom Wilson. Yeah, you know. Well, somebody's gonna come along and be able to do what Tom Wilson does. Come on, it ain't Josh Anderson. <laughs> okay, all right. It ain't him. It ain't him. I'm not. So you're not, not willing to, to to put it on the vision board. I could no. I could see him getting traded back to Columbus. Oh, do you think Babs would like him? Of course. Um, another guy I want to talk about is is you know they got another year of Mike Hoffman's contract, four and a half million dollars. He's 33. Uh, he hasn't produced much since coming to the Canadians. Like he, this guy used to be like a perennial 25 goal scorer. Um, so that's a trade deadline move right there. I, right? I feels like that's it, doesn't a, it? You're getting some sort of draft pick or prospect back at the trade deadline come 2024. The, the, the issue with the Habs is you're going to have all these kids, but like you got to insulate them a bit, mm-hmm. right? Like, so you got to have guys who can, you know, push them up or down the lineup and can take some of the heat and do a little bit of the scoring when, you know, cause you don't want just a team full of, rookies right like even even that uh team that we talk about all the time 16 17 matthews marner and nylander like they had all these vets right so they've had so much injury trouble i think they're gonna hold on to hoffman until yeah i think jesse nailed it probably the the trade deadline the one thing i find interesting about him is he feels like and this is another former canadian evgeny dadanoff like all offense nothing else and yeah. there's a lot of lot of teams going into the playoffs that are like, well, we've got our power play figured out. That's why we're in the playoffs. Every coach thinks they're smart. I can insulate that player. We need goal scoring, which the fact that we need goal scoring is not my fault because I'm smart. Okay. And we bring in this player who can goal score. Yeah. <laughs> but he can't defend. But I can hide the fact that he can defend because I'm smart. <laughs> Even though we can't score... It's not my fault because I'm smart. That's right. It's every it's simply said, said every NHL coach. Another one that's interesting for the Canadians because there is going to be, I think there's going to be a big, this is the year for a big change in the Canadians roster. Christian Dvorak has two more years at 4.45. This is another, this is why I was so glad that they hired Treliving um, for the Leafs and not Mark Bergevin because these are all Bergevin contracts. And I'm, I don't doubt Ken Hughes or Jeff Gordon's uh, ability to move on from these players, but it is difficult. And Christian Dvorak uh, in two years in Montreal has 21 goals and it looks like about 40 assists in, you know, 100 games. It's not great. Here's the thing. When you're a bottom three team in the league, isn't that where they finished? Yeah. Bottom five, bottom three team in the league. You have no bad contracts. If you're that young and that bad, you know exactly what you are. But I don't think that's what the goal is this year. No. I think they want. It, I think the goal this year is to stop the fall and to take a step forward. I'm not saying that they want to make the playoffs. I think they'll do that naturally. 
They they just, they got to move some of these contracts out though, Steve. Yeah, but they got to fucking stay healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. They got to fucking stay healthy. They they've been like the least lucky team for two years straight and also there was no incentive to play through injury at all no like you're hopefully gonna get full years out of arbor jack eye cole caulfield nick suzuki mm-hmm. your eye slavkovsky uh and like but you uh, need to uh, get those Kate guys Cooley. you also need to get those guys the ice time that they need and with these these big contracts if you're trying to move on from them Cutting their ice time does not allow you to move on from them as ah, easily. That's the coach. No, maybe they look better in reduced roles. Maybe the reason they're sinking instead of swimming is because they're playing too much. Okay. All right. That's that's up to old Marty. I like uh I like the Kirby Doc deal at three three point three million bucks. The guy's twenty two years old. He had a really good year last year. Not not bad at all. Uh Michael Matheson's contract, four point eight seven five. What do you think? <sighs> Oh, I think they might be, they might do well to sell high on him. Joel Edmondson, 35 or 3.5, not 35 million. I think they might do well to get rid of him. Man, if if the Oilers ever call you again and do what they apparently did last year, which was offer a first round pick, fucking take it, man. What are you out of your mind? Take it. See bus. Um, I hope you like Ohio, Joel. David Savard, 3.5 million the next two years. Loves being a Canadian Seems to be a really good leader. Tough guy. Feels like a guy that's going to stick around. You should. Okay. Uh, and then the rest of them are, you know, there's barely any money tied up anywhere uh, on the on the Habs roster. Uh, but they do have Chris Weidman. The Leafs are going to get what oh, they deserve. Wow. Chris Weidman for one more year at 700 grand. Uh, well, the Habs then, are going to take a step, so they won't need him anymore. Then the two goalies, Mountain Bowl. Uh, one more year at one million, and then Jake Allen is making three point eight five. But I'm sure that that tandem just stays the same. Montebo's they're in, okay. Taking step forward. Yeah, if they if they're really trying to win, they they'll upgrade the goalie position. Like that's where they need the most help right yeah. now in terms of their roster if they're trying to compete. But I don't know what the plan is for Montreal this coming season. If it's to take another step forward, or if it's kind of hold pat on the rebuild. I think I think we're forgetting that they were pretty middle of the pack. Like they were sort of in that playoff picture for. I'm going to say a couple months and then yeah. the wheels <laughs> fell all the way off. They regressed to where they should have been. But Maybe. with the with the Cole Caulfield deal, like this is the perfect time if you're a general manager to have a star who's like 21 to 24-ish age mm-hmm. because the contracts are all kind of in this grouping of this $7 million range. Because if you look at the Jack Hughes deal is $8 million. The Joshua oh. Norris deal is 7.9. Oh. The Quinn Hughes deal is 7.8. Oh. Caulfield is 7.8. Jason Robertson is 7.7. Oh, I forgot. Pedersen, who's uh, 24 still, is 7.3. Oh. Nico Heischer is 7.2. This Tage Thompson is seven point one. Where's Stutzla in this equation? Uh, Timmy Stutz is. I don't have it up. Uh, Timmy Stutz is eight point three. So oh, he's even just little. on the little higher end of it. But and even that contract's real. That's good. still really good. Oh. This is there's because of the tightness of the salary cap because it hasn't gone up. It hasn't budged at all in the last several years. These GMs are just fucking going to the bargain bin on these 22 year olds who are going to be absolute stars in this National Hockey League for the next decade. Yeah. And getting these eight year deals for seven point seven for seven point eight. And they're going to be absolutely laughing in five years. I want I want Leaf fans to stop. I think generally that's the consensus. Run. <laughs> I want you to stop. As soon as this cool Caulfield extension was announced, Leaf fans are like, fucking murder. All I see in the trending is, is every time an extension is signed, it's Mitch Marner in the trending. Bro, guys, you guys fucking forget when he signed that extension and maybe it's a million dollars, maybe even two million dollars too rich. He had 94 points. He never adjusted. He has he had more points in one season when he signed that extension than Cole Caulfield has had in his entire career. They haven't no, won, never adjusted. They are not there. the same. They are not the same. And Cole Caulfield's going to be a star. Mitch Marner is a star. But Mitch Marner had proven it in his third year. Cole Caulfield 
Yeah. To be honest with you, they are still taking a bet because you to say that he's proven it, it would be wrong. He oh, hasn't proven guess. it. It's an educated guess. And it's a and you know what? It's a bet I think all of us would take. Yeah. No, like uh, again. But stop th- doing Marner this dirty. Like I understand you're upset about the Leafs going out. I understand that, you know, that, you know, he had like 12 points in the first three games and they didn't have much the rest of the way. I totally understand all of that. But please. Please stop. They, <laughs> they signed the deal before the pandemic. They never adjusted. Didn't win shit. You know, this wasn't, this wasn't about the Leafs. I know, Just but I, fair. I got to say this because it no, happens Habs every are like, damn no, we, time. You're enjoying this. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're yeah. enjoying this too much. Let's I'm fun. saying uh, Habs fans, yeah, I, yeah, if Cole Caulfield goes to projects to be who he should be, and if he becomes who everybody thinks he should be, the deal is going to be amazing. And all Habs fans yeah. should be rejoicing today for this deal. I think if he's a consistent 40 goal scorer, it might be a disappointment. He projected this season if he had played 82 games to have 45 goals. Yeah, he no, played 46. So yeah. he's one of the best game by game goal scorers in the NHL. Yeah, so it's great value. And yeah, he's gross. Uh, Leafs fans can be in their feelings. They need to chill. They need to fucking chill. All right, <laughs> listen. Let them let let the new guys settle in. Nothing's gonna happen for the first little bit unless something does. Uh, and uh, and they're just gonna they're gonna do stuff. And I I again it goes back to uh, the Montreal Canadiens did a good deal. Let's just leave it at that. No. Can we just leave it at that? No. Sibley couldn't. No. Couldn't imagine. That's not how sports works. It it, it does. Team? Somebody say. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dangle Ten. By the my, way, countrywide tonight. My team did good thing. Therefore, your team bad thing. My team did bad thing. Therefore, your team uh, wish they did good thing. Like your team, your team. Yeah, yeah no, that's that's okay. how it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like, fandom! I like yeah. that you uh, you made it like cavemanish. You know, yeah. <laughs> My team do good. Your team bad. That's kind of how it is. Yeah, team better. Yeah, that's that's sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go team! <laughs> I, I had an ex tell me once that um, that their their uh, their life was a lot their their life was a lot less stressful when they didn't have the Leafs in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Me too. I can't remember that time, but I'm sure it was. Um, so let's talk to Dave, and then we got to talk about the return of a ghost, a guy that we weren't sure would ever be back in the NHL, Michael Jefferson Babcock. Hmm. I don't know if that's his real middle name. Uh, we don't get to talk about the fucking Stanley Cup final. Nah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Let's do it, Mike or Dave. Not not Mike. We're not having Mike on. Dave. John. You can bet that with David Bastel. Brought to you by Sports Interaction. Get in the action and make a play. Nineteen plus. Please play responsibly. Welcoming Dave after a f- a Panthers loss. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, Dave, listen. Uh, I think uh, I think we need to know about game two. I think we yep. need to talk about the awards and how those that's all changed. Let's 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 start. So, uh, what do we got for game two? What can we look forward to? Yeah, well, Vegas, no surprise favorites in sports interaction to win game two. Uh, One sixty nine is what they're paying right now. Florida, pretty good nice. value on them. If if you think you're gonna eye this series up, two nineteen. Five and a half is the over under. There was more than that. Probably should have been even more than what was actually scored in game one. So uh, I got a heavy lean to the over right now, but that seems to be the favorite right now. A lot of people are betting overs. A lot of people are betting Vegas. What say you? Uh, I, I got, man, because Florida's lost game ones before. They've done this. Yep. They've been here. Yeah, in the first round. Yeah. That was their first loss since May 10th. And it was, like, significant. The question I have is, is the Bobrovsky magic over? Because not at, no goalie can hold a 970 save percentage forever. So is yep. the magic over? Is he Does he revert to, I'm a pumpkin Bobrovsky? Or is he is he still the guy that got him here? No, I think the magic returns. Yeah? Um, I was, I left... Game one convinced with two things. Number one, Vegas is the better team. Number two, Florida can still win. Okay, Jesse. (laughs) Everybody's talking about one side of the net. Everybody loves talking about Sergei Bobrovsky, but Aiden Hill at the other side of the ice has a better save percentage than Sergei Bobrovsky these playoffs. I don't know who you're talking about. That is a thing that is happening. And he came in 
in relief of Laurent Brassois, who was the starting goaltender for the first series and a half. And in relief, he has been the best player these entire playoffs. No question. And, and Dave, you're talking about some interesting con Smythe odds because he's not yeah. currently even the top three favorites. He's, he's way back. And so there's some good value on that right now. Yeah, really good value, Jess. He's actually at number five. There's two Golden Knights ahead of him, Jack Eichel, Jonathan Marcia Show. Uh, interesting enough, when this series opened up, uh, Aiden Hill was around 13 to one to win the con Smythe. So, you know, he was, he was in that position in that wheelhouse, but as soon as you get into double digits, you start to think that, okay, it's a, it's a little bit of a long shot. Well, that's dropped significantly. It's now a 7.80, just under eight to one. Uh, if he wins tonight, that's going to drop again. If it's a shutout, it might drastically drop again. Yep. So eight to one, pretty good value right now. I like we that. missed the thirteen, but that paddle save, think about. like put that paddle Outrageous. save on a loop for the rest of the entirety of planet Earth. If they end up winning the Stanley Cup, I will not. That's be, exactly. It. I will not be wooed, Devil Dave. <laughs> I'm sticking with Jonathan <laughs> Marks. So you, you, you cannot trick me. <laughs> Jonathan and the revenge of the computer boys. Yeah, nobody nobody pronounces Metropolitan Division like Jonathan Master Show. No, that's uh, right. Look that <laughs> yeah, look that up. Like All star game. Like oh, that. okay. I gotta look that up. Um, what else we got, Dave? What else? We'll we talk at? about that off the air. We'll talk about that off the air. So, uh, you know what? Uh, tons with the NBA, of course, with the Nuggets and uh, and the Miami Heat now tied at one. So that's big. Uh, Canadian Opens coming up this weekend too. Uh, that's that's always a pretty good event for the country. It's it's almost acts like a major. It's not quite the major, but and of course the following week is the U.S. Open. So lots going on in the month of uh, June. A lot of people sit there and go, oh, it's quieting. It's not that quiet. CFL is going to start up at the end of the month. So lots to get at uh, in uh, in your whatever way you'd like to sports bet. All right. And Beautiful. the cool thing about the Canadian Open is it's in Adam's backyard. That's right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Steve. Adam has a great lawn for anybody who wouldn't. Nobody would get that. Yeah, joke, it's only but. Steve gets yeah. that. <laughs> only Steve. Well, I assumed we were about to explain it. But no, never mind. Let's move on. <laughs> All right, Dave, we'll see you on Friday, my friend. Thank you so much. I look forward to it, guys. Be well. Okay, so Skip the Dishes Countrywide has a promo code for you for the stale. Thank right. you. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. So, uh, <laughs> I like um, that remix. Basically, oh. <laughs> feast for the cup. Did somebody say skip? Um, basically, we ha we have a promo code for you. It's ten dollars off when you spend twenty dollars or more. The promo code is Dangle. How do you spell it? Dangle. So it's Dangle ten. Dangle ten. There are fifteen hundred total that you can use. Hmm. Uh, they're all Dangle ten, but at fifteen hundred, that's where they cap it. So it, when you spend twenty dollars or more, you will get ten dollars off. It is redeemable only on delivery orders at any restaurant, grocer, or convenience store on Skip. Ooh. So quick, as quickly as you possibly can, get on, get in on it for the Stanley Cup, and we may just have one for you on Wednesday <laughs> as well for Thursday night's game. The grocery store thing is underrated. Ordering your groceries on Skip on oh, the Skip uh, app is unreal. It's just thinking you can do your full order. That's yeah. the crazy part. I keep forgetting to order coffee cream for the office. Why don't you do it on Skip? Did somebody say? Jesse. What? Press the button. What button? I'm oh my god. Stop it. <laughs> Promo code no! Dangle 10. It's feast for the cup time with Skip di Skip the Dishes. It's a man. <laughs> $10 when you spend 20 or more. Use the promo code Dangle10. And there are only 1,500 total available. So you met him. By the way, this is countrywide. So if you're watching in Edmonton, if you're watching in Calgary, Vancouver, it's the entire country of Canada. Wherever you get Skip, you can get Dangle 10 and get your 10 bucks off. List some more places. Shakutami. Botswana. Not in Canada. We Okay, well, we got two places. <laughs> away from All right, it's not in Botswana. Wrap it up. So it's the return of the Michael Mac? Babcock. Oh, not the Mac. No, no. Mike Babcock has returned, uh, or at least will return once his contract with the Toronto Maple Leafs expires. Eight-year deal. Paid him over five million bucks a season. Wow. And why would you come back to coaching? Uh, to Because here's the thing. The way it works is no other team's going to pay Mike Babcock that amount of money. We know that. And so what would happen is if Columbus had wanted to sign him, say, before this year, um, he would have still made five million dollars. But he wouldn't have made money on top of that with Columbus. If Columbus paid him $2 million to be their head coach, the Leafs would have paid Babcock $3 million. Columbus would have paid him $2 million. 
the amount of money is the same. So why not just sit at home? And why help the Toronto Maple Leafs? Well, especially ever, if you're Mike. Ever. Yeah. Under uh, any situation at all. Yeah, ever. You don't need to help them with their bills. So, um, yeah, why I heard. The first thing I thought about when it was announced that, well, it's not been announced officially, but when it was when it came out that Mike Babcock will be signing with Columbus as their head coach on July 1st, I thought, you know, I, I was a big defender of Johnny Gaudreau going to Columbus. He can do what he wants. If he wants to fly to Jersey to see his family, he can do that. Um, but... You know, part of the reason it was speculated, uh, even though it turned out not to be true, that he didn't want to go to Philadelphia was that John Tortorella was the head coach. And it turns out Philadelphia didn't even make him an offer because they didn't mm. have the cap space because they had traded for Tony D'Angelo and re-signed him, which is ridiculous in retrospect. Gaudreau could have signed with the Devils last season. Could have been in the playoffs. Uh, could have been riding shotgun with Jack Hughes. And now you're in Columbus. Damn. And... Not only you're in Columbus, but you're in Columbus that that is sort of an in between, right? They are sort of they they made that big signing last year, but they also are like, what are you going to do with all these guys? And what are you? And so you think Mike's probably going to come in and try to give them an identity, but it's the type of coach you would expect that Johnny Gaudreau, not loving Brent Sutter, would not like. Tortorella, Babcock, Brent Sutter of the same milk. It's Darryl? a mystifying decision. Sorry. Daryl Sutter, not Brent Sutter. Why did I say Brent? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. First names don't matter anymore. It's anyway, true. keep going, Steve. So John Babcock. Um, <laughs> no, the the Mike Babcock signing in, in Columbus to me doesn't make much sense because of Johnny Gaudreau and Zach Wierenski, like you mentioned. The, uh, Wierenski, when I saw that deal, I was like, Jesus, like it's it's an overpay, right? And or at least it was at the time. Yeah. Um, you know, he hasn't really played enough. Uh, to say one way or another he's been injured um and then there's johnny gaudreau again you got to overpay for ufas but those signings for an rfa and a ufa were statements for a team that hasn't had the biggest budget in the past we are willing to spend we want you to come to columbus and we want you to stay in columbus and why would you go to columbus to play under mike babcock Right. Like it's uh, there's a lot of nuance to why Babcock has not been in the league for the last few years. And I think people miss out on that. And I don't know if it's on purpose or just because our lives are busy and we have too much to pay. What is it, though? To. Let's let's talk about that. So let's start with the least of his sins. All right. Um, I'm curious to hear what that is. The least of his sins would probably be generally speaking, the way he treated, I would say, vets on the way out. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Commodore hates his guts. Yeah. How he, yeah. how he treated him on the way out. Yep. Chris Chelios doesn't like him for how he treated him on the way out. Um, and Mike Medano is the most famous one. Yes. Mike Medano, who will forever be sitting at 1,499 career NHL games played. Babcock wants a roster that will win every single night. Mm -hmm. And he didn't care what it would do to the locker room. None of that shit. Didn't care. Um, you're getting scratched. Too bad. My way or the highway. Then we elevate to what he did with Mitch Marner. Right? And again, people are going to be like, that's really not that bad. And some people think it's a cardinal sin. Others, you know, not so bad. What did he do what, other than make a rookie like feel kind of retell, sad? Retell the story because so, not everybody's a huge Toronto Maple Leaf fan that watches this. Yeah. So what happened was during Mitch Marner's rookie year, there were a bunch of rookies on that team and some vets. Babcock brings Marner into a room and he asks Mitch to rank players uh, from hardest working to least hardest working. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the names ever came out, but... They sure made it seem like it was one of the vets. I think Bozak um, was the least hardest working. Babcock then takes that information and relays it to the very people it's about. So the vets go to Mitch and they're like, "What, well, dude, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, why would you say that? And eventually... Mitch was in tears. Yeah. In room. And he's yeah. a kid. Yeah. And the vets then turn around to Babcock and they go, Mike, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, why would you do that? So that is something that was messed up and bad. Um, but it's also something Mitch has spoken about. Um, it's something Babcock has expressed 
regret for and remorse for. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's been hard to come by. Um, uh, Sorry, he's apologized for. And that's been hard to come by in Mike Babcock quotes. So when people look at those things, they go, uh, you know, snowflake generation, whatever, you know, kids yep. these days, he should have been in the NHL this whole time. And the Leafs are just a bunch of pampered babies and they couldn't handle it. It completely ignores what he put Johan Franzen through. Uh, through. That's a guy who he, I believe, won the Stanley Cup with uh, in 2008, went to back-to-back cup finals with. Franzen had a unfortunately long history of uh, concussion issues. Mm -hmm. And while battling with those concussion issues and the mental health issues therein, Chris Chelios, who is very not a Gen Z player, (laughs) talked about... Whoa, I'm going to give you... Hold on, keep going. Chris Chelios is like 50 years old, right? Um, He's talked about Babcock bullying... Uh, <laughs> this is Chris Chelios' book's name is Made in America. Chris Chelios. <laughs> Chris gives you an idea of how not Gen Z Chris Chelios. Yes. yes. Made in America. Made in America. <laughs> cracks a beer. Chelios. And he waves the flag. That's right. Made in America. Who I believe tried out for the Greek bobsled team as well. Oh, nice. Um, that's not a joke. That's something he actually did. That's crazy. But Good for him. Chris Chelios talked about the bullying of Johan Franzen as one of the worst things he'd seen in the league. Franzen hated coming to the rink. He, uh, you know, had nervous breakdowns about it. And like, he's, he's, he's kind of messed up. Like he's, he's having a tough time of it, uh, post playing career. And this guy, this was a guy who, was a workhorse for Mike Babcock. He was a warrior in front of the net. They called him the next Thomas Holmstrom. His nickname was Mule. Like th- this was a guy willing to do everything for your team. And uh, it was just sort of um, a portrayal of Babcock. His his treatment of Johan Franzen was a portrayal of Babcock that if you're the prize pony, um, he'll be good to you. And then the second you run out of use, um, you're no good for him. Are any of those things bad enough to keep you out of the league forever? I don't know. I mean, no, the answer is no. If I'm, he's going to sign a contract July 1st. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm taxed with running a hockey team, am I going to hire him to be my coach? Mm -hmm. No, Mm -hmm. that doesn't mean one of the 31 other guys won't yeah because that's what it's coming down to we what babcock's done is he like it's not other instances where he's done something abhorrent or illegal or abated criminal activity or anything like that at the same time as like it it happened within months of like the bill peters stuff yes and people began conflating the two Mm mm-hmm and while both are bad, they are not the same. What you're talking about is a specific coaching style that Mike Babcock has. And not even in terms, I shouldn't even say coaching style. Coaching style as well as just his personality as a human and the way he treats interpersonal relationships. Yeah. And it's a choice of these people who are making hiring decisions for head coaches to say, hey, We know who Mike Babcock is as a person. There is enough evidence here of his time on earth about how he treats other people around him and the hockey players he has to coach. And do we want that guy coaching our players? And they're free to make that decision because he hasn't done anything that's gotten him a ban from the NHL. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not other instances where people have been directly in violation of of rules and protocols and they've been banned. Mike Babcock is free to work. And if... Quenville has to be reinstated. Exactly. Exactly. So if a president says, I I know everything Mike Babcock has done, because they all know, like, it's such a small circle. If we know, they know. And they say, yeah. That's the guy I want coaching Ross Levick and Kent Johnston and all of these young kids, you know, then I guess that's their decision. I would don't agree with it at all, but I don't I guess that's the conclusion they came to is that that's what we need to get these guys to play better. I would be I don't agree with it at all. Attracted players to Columbus. Yeah, it's strange. The the (laughs) there was a line, uh, I think. Friedman was interviewed 
uh, by David Amber, first or second intermission of game one of the Stanley Cup final, which we will talk about. Um, and he mentioned <laughs> Rick Nash as a part of this decision. Yes. Rick Nash did play a very interesting role for Mike Babcock at the 2010 Olympics uh, in Vancouver. Because, you know, Rick Nash perennial, you know, threat to win the Maurice Rocket Richard Trophy in the NHL. He played a, a role. He was a role player, basically. He was kind of a puck retrieving grunt um, for that 2010 uh, men's Olympic team. But what is staggering about that is Rick Nash is like, yeah, I had a positive experience with this guy at a tournament 13 years ago. <laughs> and that means he's going to have success in the National Hockey League in 2023. Even if he's right, the reasoning is asinine. <laughs> One thing Friedman also did uh, report is that uh, Kekalainen did go to Columbus players and give them the heads up that this was what they were thinking about uh, during the hiring process and the interview process and that they all kind of knew that this was coming down the pipeline. But I hear that kind of information and it's like, OK, so but like, what can I do? I'm Johnny Goudreau. I signed an eight year massive deal or seven year massive deal to come here. And now I'm stuck here. He signed there to put down roots. Right. And so you're telling me you want to hire Mike Babcock. What am I going to do? Like storm out? I'm going to give you my opinion, obviously. But like, how much is that going to sway what Yarmo wants to do? So I don't know. And like, I look at the roster of Columbus and them bringing in Babcock and all that. I'm like, Bringing in Mike Babcock doesn't save the fact that you have like no centerman and that Boone Jenner is your number one center and they're, the defense is just atrocious the way it played last year and you have no size that can move anybody. Like this isn't going to help their roster. No, for all his faults, I think Babcock is somewhat decent at squeezing blood from a stone. Um, so, you know, they'll they'll have a a roster that's difficult to beat night in and night out. I still don't know how many games they're going to win. Yeah. But in terms of building a roster, I mean, it better be through the draft because I don't think you're yeah. going to be able to sign uh, unrestricted free agents. So you already have a roster that's so underwhelming based on performance and just on paper. You look at the skill that they have and then you go hire a coach who is like um, he's just no he's a deterrent for people to sign in your city. Damn, in our word. That's and, so true. And it's already a city that people don't usually sign in. So how are you helping your franchise by making this hiring? I, I want to ask you this, too. Yarmo Kekalina was was uh, hired in 2013. No so, way. Yeah, he was. Uh, Man, a wow. decade. Kekalina was announced February 13th, 2013, after Scott House, and now, who is now the head of the AHL, uh, was fired the previous day, John Davidson, uh, former Rangers goalie. He was and, fired like a month after the Leafs fired Burke. Yeah. Or he was hired, rather. Kekalina is also the assistant GM of Finland's national team. Um, since 2013, the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets have made the playoffs four times. And they have got one playoff win. Sorry, five times because they were they they made it uh, well, the, the first year he was there. They won a qualifying round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first round. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> first yeah, yeah. You're right. Who did they you're beat? right. The fucking, <laughs> fucking Leafs. Shit ass Sh Leafs. Shit ass Leafs. Um, uh, and and by the way, that year they had they were when they did beat the Leafs, ass. they had finished um ninth. ninth in the East. Yeah, it was the eight nine this, matchup. This is the thing. Okay, so. I'm wondering, forget Mike Babcock in this for just a second. I'm wondering when Yarmo Kekalainen's uh, philosophies on hockey start to benefit the Blue Jackets. Fuck. Like, Damn. like listen, if you look, Columbus is a great place to live. When we have Portsy on, Portsline, he, he's always like beating the drama. Columbus is a great place to live, great place to raise a family, great sports culture with the university nearby. I liked it. Um, people shit on Ohio all the time. I've been to Ohio. It's beautiful. There are parts that are that are tough, but there are parts of Ontario that are tough. It's, like whatever, it's every place. Uh, it, <laughs> so I I wonder sometimes where with Yarmo. And again, I'm going to say this, and they're going to have a fucking great year, and they're going to finish first in the division, and Mike Babcock's going to win the Jack fucking Adams. I'm sure that's going to happen. But from where it looks right now, I'm wondering what 
Yarmo Kekalainen has brought to the Columbus Blue Jackets that has benefited them long term. We're talking about a guy who has alienated some of his better players over the last few years, including Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now, Pierre-Luc Dubois has got some ownership in that. Uh, uh, and yeah. Like big time ownership. <laughs> and that line, lot of ownership. I think they won the deal with the line A deal, right? I don't know. Well, that was after Gaudreau. That was the second person. Everyone's like, Babcock is going to coach Patrick Line. Mm-hmm. Those two are going to tear each other apart. Well, and that's the thing, right? Now you got Line, who had 22 goals last year, 52 points. He had 26 the year before. You know, he's it's not the 44 he got, you know, in his second year in, in Winnipeg. 55 games. 55 games. Yeah, he was injured. You're right. He was injured. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess they won that deal, but they haven't. The team is not better. The team yeah. is worse. And and the entire time that John Tortorella was coaching that team, what do we always say about John Tortorella? Why did John Tortorella get another job in the NHL? Because he continued to squeeze blood from a stone with the Columbus Blue Jackets. He continued to find ways to fucking force that team into the eighth seed to get them into the playoffs. I think the highest they finished under Yarmo Kekalainen I'm looking, is fourth in the Metro, or no, they were third in the Metro one time. Third in the Metro one time. And and listen, everybody's got the same salary cap. Columbus, as far as we know, is not operating with an internal budget. They've got a really good fan base, really good season ticket base, really good local sponsorship deals. Like, this is a healthy franchise. So what's the excuse here? Is it just that you like tough guys too much? And you're, and you're, you're you know, Columbus is, Supposed to be known for their defense, supposed to be known for their toughness. The last couple of years, they've Not been sure. a total mess. I, I just, man, how many how many shots does Yarmo get? And Babcock is your guy? <laughs> Babcock? Maybe there was the not thought. a single other person in the world. Not a single other person who could have come in here and done a good job coaching the Columbus Blue Jackets. Well, so maybe there's a thought that this is one of the better coaches in the world. In terms of winning. In what decade? I'm just trying to walk through what he's thinking. He's thinking this is one of the better coaches in the world. These coaches rarely become available. And when they do become available, they don't come here. Hmm. We have a chance to not only get him, but get him probably at under his expected market value. It's the Johnny Goudreau of coaching hires is what you're outlining. (laughs) Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Except Johnny didn't have anything bad on his record that would lead you to believe, hey, he this guy's sort of, sort of a shitty guy. No, in it's, terms of uh, in terms of just the pure circumstances of, hey, here's a situation where we can get a guy who typically wouldn't come here. And, the, and, and to give you an idea <laughs> of how negative I, the reason I'm so negative about it is because when, when Mike Babcock left Toronto, it wasn't just the Mitch Marner story that came out. It wasn't just the stuff we'd seen in Detroit because that had already come out. I didn't know the Franzen stuff. Uh, the Franzen stuff, well, we found out from a Swedish newspaper. Yeah. Right. It's it's also the fact that like there was there were literal reports in the media of people going, hey, this guy fucks with people. He just fucks with people. He fucks with players and he messes with their head. And we saw it with Franzen directly. But there are a bunch of players that that have not come out and talk about it publicly. Why would why would you take a chance? And, and I think Jesse had a good point. Why would you want young players being in with this guy? Marner, uh, the, you know, there was a lot of misunderstanding when the Marner renegotiation happened uh, for his his um, his extension. You know, one of the things that the hashtag way to go Paul thing was, remember, it's Paul Marner. Uh, th- th- a lot of stuff leaked out through through Darren Dreger about how the Marner family were upset about how the Toronto Maple Leafs had treated Mitch. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons was they told when Lou Lamorello signed him to his rookie deal, they told Mitch, we don't do rookie bonuses on the Toronto Maple Leafs. So Mitch signed the contract. And guess who got rookie bonuses? Austin Matthews. Yep. That was a shitty move by the Leafs. If I was Mitch Martin, I'd be pissed about that. But it is the first overall pick, so you can't argue with it. Although if you're Mitch, you're like, well, I was like three behind the guy. What's the big deal? Okay, so you got that. Three spots. You got that. But the other side that we did not know about, we're like, if that's the worst, then you're you're doing fine, Mitch. Uh, but it wasn't the worst. The the list story, which Mitch Marner never wanted we to thought, go public. We thought it was he was demoted to the fourth line for like two games once. That's and people were pissed about it. Yeah. And then when that story came out, it's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. I understand why Mitch Marner felt like he was mistreated by the organization. You I would, too. Yeah. And I just I just wonder, like Mike and Yarmo seem like they're cut from the same sort of cloth. Right. Mm-hmm. They're both stubborn. They're both like rock. They're like, you know, it's like it, it'd be like talking to a the, the side of a mountain. Just a <laughs> rock. You're just a, a solid rock of whatever. And maybe they'll find success. 
But I have a I have serious questions about Babcock as a coach. And because he made the hire, I now have serious questions about Yarmo Kekalainen. I think I think this reflects really poorly on him because it's not about what Mike Babcock did specifically to even Fr- Franzen or Marner or any of that. It's just that, like, when was the last time Mike Babcock won a first round series? 20, I want to say it's like 13. It's quite some time ago. So I, so I, oh, he's one of the best coaches in the world. So that's why I asked you, what decade? Yeah. Yeah. Randy Carlisle, when he came to the Leafs, was considered one of the best coaches in the world. He just, he had won a cup five years before with the Anaheim Ducks. In what decade was this person a great coach? In what decade? What have you done for me lately? I think he thinks he's finding an elite coach in the bargain bin. What was your guess about when he won his last first round? 2013. I didn't say 2011. Steve Dangle, everybody. Oh. Hey. The Detroit Red Wings lost in the uh, conference semifinals in uh, 2013. So that so they means lost they, in the second round. they won one round. And then since then, he lost in the first round uh, twice with Detroit. And then he missed the playoffs with the Leafs in 2015-16. Lost in the first round three times with the 16 through 19 Leafs. And then was fired in 2020. Yeah. Also, being an NHL coach must be awesome. Hmm. Because there are... Once you're in. Well, like, Quenville's trying to get in. Mm-hmm. He's 64. <laughs> Babcock's trying to get in. He's 60. Like, these dudes, they don't need it, surely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They don't need it. But also, there's two guys who probably don't want to go out the way they're currently out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Babcock has a choice. Quenville doesn't. It's always interesting when you see these guys who, like, Lou who's uh, pushing uh, his mid-80s. Um, he's, isn't he? Here, let me look. He's got to be 83. He's I'll look, I'll look. In and around that age. And and the two guys you just named who are in there. He's 80. He's 80. He's he is 80 exactly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, when do they like move on from the game? You know, I guess I guess once you're in, you're just a lifer. I think people like I think people like hockey, and I get that. Yeah. Listen, I I I love that. Do I think I'll be? Do I hope to be working at eighty? Absolutely not. Right. Uh, but I'm sure there there are just people that that's that's all they've ever known, and they can't imagine life without it. And I get it. I, I guess, get it. I guess to be in those positions, that's got to be your mentality. Yes. You know, like all we see with professional athletes is all they do is hang on a year or two too long. You know, and if, if if it wasn't for their body, they would probably keep playing. And with these GMs, like there's no there's no like body aspect to it that hold that forces retirement upon them. Yep. You know, like Jerome McGinley. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's hey, as long as you have the mental capacity and you can get to the office every day and make these the phone calls on your your private line like Lou can, you can still do the job. And I guess they're just going to keep doing it as long as they can. And they're never going to leave this game. Even though it'd be fun to see new blood churn over like you do with players. Every- I'd love to see a young guy, or even even not an maybe not even a young guy. I you know the the kind of coach I think the Columbus Blue Jackets. If you'd asked me a week ago what they need is I I would look at Carolina and I would say look at what Broad Brandon Moore brought. Look at what Marty Saint Louis has brought in Montreal. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always have to be former players. But what I like about those guys is they're energy guys. Those are Marty, two great examples. Yeah. Marty St. Louis comes in and you're like, I will fucking die for Marty. Yeah. I will die for Marty. Rod Brindamore, I will die for Rod. Rod the bod. Look at him. He's in better shape than I am. Yep. Like, those, are, those are two new coaches who are two of the best coaches in the National Hockey League. But those are two coaches who get a pass because of their playing resume. Uh, generally speaking... Um, like when a young person enters the talent pool of NHL executives or coaches, um, like, listen, there is a vibe. Um, and when a player or a, sorry, a coach or a GM gets hired, everyone in hockey talks about they're a good man, good hockey man, good mm-hmm. person, good hockey man. And when these young dudes come in, it's who the fuck, fuck is this asshole Mm -hmm. kyle dubas not now obviously but when he came in when he came in who the fuck is this asshole yep john chaka when he came in now we know how it ended up but we didn't know that right away Mm -hmm. and also he's gonna get another job 
And as soon as he got hired, who the fuck is this asshole? And I'll give you a great example of a dude who was not given a sliver of a chance from day one. Jeremy Colleton as head coach of the Chicago <laughs> oh. Blackhawks. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, it didn't work out. Yeah, no kidding. It didn't work out. Everyone from day one was like, who the fuck is this asshole? And John like, John Davidson, too. Or not John Davidson. Yeah, the guy who runs uh, who runs the Blackhawks now. Uh, Wirtz? No, no. The GM. Is it not John? No, Kyle Davidson. Kyle Davidson. John Davidson is the president of the Columbus Blue. Yeah, I was like, no, Kyle Davidson. he's old. A lot of people were like, what the fuck? And you know what? Honestly, some of the first few moves he made, because he wasn't a hockey guy. Mm-hmm. I think he'd come over from like Stan baseball. Bowman was young, but ah, that's Scotty's kid. But ah, Stan, we let him go. Are you telling me you can't find a coach that's energetic in the OHL or the QMJHL or the you know the American the NCAA? Like nobody. Yeah, it's, it had to be Mike Babcock. It had to be guy with long resume of fucking up players. <laughs> oh well, but he won in two thousand eight. No, I Adam, I'm agreeing with you. The, Mike Babcock's most recent Stanley Cup win is like a year after Randy Carlisle's. Yeah, no, the youth in hockey, young legs do young work. You do the grunt stuff. You do the lifting. You do the, you do whatever it is. You go get the coffee. You, you're not a decision maker, and they just don't respect you. And and I I look at call it in that way who like listen did he do a good job in chicago i don't know probably not no but also the the, the blackhawks were they, they were like stand, openly stand, against him from day one and stan bowman had fucked up that team badly yeah like the roster stunk what was he the, supposed the to leadership done? group didn't want to get on board with it like it was that that the blackhawks were an absolute fucking disaster and the, that's before we found out what was going on behind the, the scenes. leadership group who like i don't know you gotta sort of look at their legacy uh, taking out the most complicated parts, but you know they were great leaders when the team was good. Yes, they weren't able to lead. The second thing started to go south, and that's, they were openly against everything the team was doing. They were openly difficult. They were openly the sort of thing that other younger players in this league would be called divas for. Yeah, and difficult, but ah, Stanley Cup resume. There's something about that fucking ring. It just makes you blind. Like it just, it just completely takes everything away from you. But Taves and Kane and all those guys, they were terrible leaders from basically after the 2015 cup onward. And that's when you find out whether good leaders are. The reason Steve Eiserman, the reason Joe Sackick, the reason that in Toronto, Matt Sundin, mm. the reason that we consider these people. Yeah, he leaders, never won a cup. No, I know, but Matt. So we know he was good the entire time. But jo- Joe, Sorry. Joe was there for some pretty lean years in Quebec. Um, Stevie Y was there for some horrible years in Detroit. Horrible. And, and people, said the, people said, who the fuck is this asshole? They he, did. Sure. Yes, they did. they did. They did. But he also had like 100 points. Yeah. When he was named captain. Yeah, 100 points. Whoa, what a down season. The 80s. Yeah, he had a down year. That's true. But, but, but my point is, is that they were good leaders, whether the team was good or not. Chicago was. And I think Mike is going back to, you know, the original kind of conversation about what the Blue Jackets probably would have needed. I mean, maybe Yarmo is looking at the culture and he's like, this is not this culture is too loose. They're too they're too OK with losing. We need somebody who's going to come in there and you no know, nose to the grindstone. But like you can only do that with so many coaches in a row. Like the guy that he hired to replace have- Tortorella, all of the Columbus Blue Jackets fans were like, this guy's horrible. Why are we doing this? The, the fans to told you. Yeah, like, oh, they're too okay with losing here. I, I just, I need to see this. What is I, it? I need to see, I, I need to see who the top five scorers on the Blue Jackets were this year. Uh, Goudreau had 73 points. I did just check that. I also want to throw this out there. Um, if you're looking for something fun. Goudreau, Line, Jenner, Roslovic, Ken Johnson. All the guys you would expect. I, uh, Earl Marchenko so goofy. 21 goals, four assists. I love that. It's <laughs> crazy. Um, I, I want to say, uh, if anybody wants to find something funny... Uh, Google Sean Fitzgerald and the article is called What's with Mike Babcock's Accent Anyway? Oh, oh man. yeah. And what an article. Like Sean came in and actually we have a podcast in like 2019, I think, with Sean about that specific thing. Mm-hmm. And he talks about like basically nobody knows where his accent comes from. It's it's it is rural Canada, but we nobody really talks like that in any particular place, which is kind of funny. 
And like, because <laughs> he, everybody thinks he's from Saskatchewan. He's not. He's from Northern Manitoba. So um, there's like, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, there's a whole, it's a whole thing in the article. You should check it out. Uh, uh, just a fun, light, easy, good read. Um, and also, it, you know, if you're a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, it's going to introduce you to Mike a little bit. I don't know. I just think, I think Mike Babcock's not the problem in Columbus. What, no matter what he does, uh, Yarmo Kekalainen seems to be. It's it's going to be a tremendous conflict for a lot of NHL fans because I think they want to cheer against Mike Babcock, but also if the Blue Jackets do really well, it makes the Leafs look stupid. So yeah. So if you're if you're a Leaf hater, I need to know where you're at on this. Yeah. Are you cheer? Are you pro Babcock? Are you cheering for Babs? I think you might be. Well, that's a tough position to be Ooh. in. <laughs> oh, I'm not pro Babcock. I'm anti Leaf. That's pro Babcock. Oh, Steve. Oh, Adam. I'm I'm confronting you. I'm confronting the deepest, darkest parts of your mind. If you are anti Leafs on this, you are pro Babcock. Have fun with that one. Yikes. Yikes. Um, Stanley Cup Finals. I guess we should get to it. I guess it's important. Nah. Um, I want to. It's a good game. It was a good game. Uh, listen, I, I I was shocked by uh, the fact that Bobrovsky let in that many goals. I just didn't think that was possible anymore. I thought that that was off the table until next season. <laughs> um, what did you take away from this game? Obviously, we can talk about the Aiden Hill say, but really, what did you take away from this game? Uh, I came away with I thought Vegas was the better team. Um, and, but that's every game the Panthers play. Yep. But they got better as the game went, which is often not the case with the Panthers. They're, uh, they're, they let the game come to them, come to them, come to them, and then they make their move. They weren't able to do that against Vegas uh, to much success. That Aiden Hill paddle save, you get one of those a year, maybe. Um. So if I'm Florida, here's how I try to look at this. 99 times out of 100, that goes in. Yes. And it I, changes the way the game goes, too. Of course. And the Shea Theodore and Zach Whitecloud goals, mm -hmm. maybe not 99 out of 100, but the vast majority of the time, we're getting a save there. I, I, someone asked what's the difference between what the Leafs did with traffic in front of Vasilevsky in the Tampa series versus what Vegas did to Florida in game one of this series. And uh, there was barely any traffic, which was the interesting part. Mm -hmm. um, on the Theodore goal, uh, Brett Howden um, was in front, but, uh, and he had a Florida defender with him, but that was it. Like, it wasn't this huge line of guys. And on the Zach Whitecloud goal, it was no Golden Knights in front at all. It was just using Anthony Duclair as a screen. Right. So I think it was less about traffic and more about just clever shot selection from Vegas and taking advantage of a Florida team that maybe wasn't tight enough. I remember when when the Leafs played uh, uh, Bruce Cassidy, the Bruce Cassidy coach Boston Bruins with Mike Babcock as head coach. Uh, Bruce Cassidy would uh, steal his lunch money and and uh, give him a wedgie. Uh, he seems to be the kind of coach that gets into those details and is able to take the details and get them into his players' heads. And he has the talent, too. Like, like Shea Theodore on his goal makes an elite move to just say bye yeah. to the Panther who was hounding him. And he, instead of being forced into a mistake, he was forced into an elite play. Now, is it an elite play in games two, three, and four, and mm -hmm. potentially onward? We'll see. Bruce Cassidy sat there, and he took out his clipboard, and he told his team, and he said, hey, you know what? That little flip play that the Florida Panthers love running all day long versus three rounds of playoffs. Airmail and airmail. <laughs> that's not going to work today. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work at all in during game one. And that's so important to Florida's game is getting that puck quickly out of the zone and then getting hard to the puck at the other end of the ice. And Vegas doesn't. They're really great at keeping a play going. 
there there yeah. there's, there's one there's Exhausting. there's one instance um i believe it was on one of the goals where jack eichel comes from behind the net and he utilizes his speed to do a little stick lift he hits b on the controller and he steals the <laughs> puck as the florida panthers are trying to break out of the zone yeah and if if vegas is is able to play their game where they they make every zone um every time they're in the offensive zone they're able to keep it going they're able to never lose the puck and able to just a extend these little offensive zone times a couple more seconds and if they're able to do that it's gonna be really tough for florida florida doesn't have the ability to send out these little outlet passes because bruce cassidy has game planned against them it's gonna be real hard for florida to win this series man do they have horses they just did not have in 2021 yeah Mm -hmm. yeah they're a different team yeah, no, their defense is every bit as good. Yeah. Um, but the horses up front are I mean, adding Eichel to that mix is stupid. One thing that I love <laughs> yeah. about uh Vegas's defense is how even it is throughout the entire lineup. Like we don't give ice them time, enough cre- ice time and just skill level. Like we don't give them enough credit for having six defensemen who are kind of on par with each other and you can run them out at all times. If you look at the ice times, it's it's very apparent that Bruce Cassidy trusts them all throughout in the exact same way. It's it's White Cloud at 18 minutes, McNabb at 19, huh. Petro at 22, Haig at 17, Alec Martinez is the only one who's kind of down the lineup, and then Theodore at 20. They're all within two minutes of each other. He runs six defensemen all the time, except for Alec Martinez, who's a little lower on the uh, uh, t- time on ice. But it's, it's, five, it's five defensemen you're running out all the time and the ability to trust that in the stanley cup finals in game number one that is an unbelievable uh weapon to have against your opponent and i hate to talk about size i, oh, ha- I hate to talk they're about big boys why do you hate to talk about size? big because everyone thinks you just want a bunch of fucking cavemen back there there is a difference between there is a nuance there though yeah you can you can be big and score Yes, uh, or a little big, big and skilled. I, I don't want dudes who are uh, big for only that. There's, so what's the opposite of big for nothing? I can, Not little for everything. I guess that'd be well, big I mean, for that's all I bring. Well, you. I mean, it does. I think big for big. Big for big sakes. Leafs have had that, but big. Big for big sake. Like yeah, it's, you want it, Steve? it's like a like tough and effective, if that makes any sense. There right? you go. So using the size to your advantage. Jesse brought it up. Nick Haig is 6'6, 230. Ben Hutton is 6'3, 201. Alec Martinez, 6'1, 210. McNabb, 6'4, 215. <laughs> uh, Pockle? Braden Pockle? Um, 6'2, 203. Alex Petrangelo, 6'3, 215. Shea Theodore, 6'2, 197. Zach Whitecloud, 6'2, 207. So the reason I bring that up is it's highly relevant to the way the Florida Panthers play hockey hmm. is they throw the puck into your corner and fuck you up. Yeah. And it's just harder to do that to Vegas because hmm. every single, like there's not even like an ideal target to target. You push Nick Hague a little. Like, like try, just try. You can't. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, like, try, try, like, put your what? hand oh, yeah. on Nick Hague and move him off the puck. You can't like, you're not going to force them into or at least you, if if you're Bruce Cassidy, you need to say, "Listen, don't feel forced into a play. You're huge. Like absorb the hit. It you know, and if it leads to a puck battle, try to win the puck battle. But don't go throwing a pass to wherever the fuck mm-hmm. because you're panicked." T.J. Brody, who I think the world of. I mean, if you're the Florida Panthers, you're going to beat the shit out of that guy. Mm-hmm. You have targets. Yeah. You know, you can go after guys. And how many skaters under six foot did the Vegas Golden Knights dress in game number one? Skaters? Yeah. Okay. March or so is the free space. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think of other little guys on Vegas. It might, honestly, maybe just him. That's it. You're wow. fucking that is, joking. That is it. The, the other only guy, player on the roster on the entire forward group and defense core that they dressed in game one under six foot is Marshy. Whoa. The ma- isn't the majority of the NHL under six feet tall. I don't know what the stats are. On I that, feel like, I but I feel that. like that. I feel like that's an outlier. <laughs> that's an extraordinary outlier. Yeah. Phil Kessel. I know who's on their lineup is under six foot. I think he's, he's uh five eleven, but he didn't dress. You know? Wow. <laughs> 
to shit. They're a big team. How big They're is a Marcia mean so? team. <laughs> Marcia so is unreal at all moments. And you I don't know. He's I, the little you, dude in that group, and you, you, you <laughs> must just look at him and go, that guy's nuts. And Steve, yeah. like, Steve isn't saying, and we're not saying, I, I, well, we're not, we're also not unified in our opinions on hockey. There's a lot of people no. who are like, they're like, well, the STP said, well, which one of us? <laughs> When I when people tweet that, I'm like, I'm like, we are completely different on a lot of different facts here. My, my um, personal favorite is Adam said this. What a dumbass! And I'm like, no, no, what? He was agreeing with something I said. <laughs> yeah, call me a dumbass. Well, it's like it's it's you're. I'm sitting next to Mickey Mouse, so sometimes it's just easier to. Uh, you don't want to. You can't hate Mickey Mouse. He's the best. <laughs> you easily hate Mickey Mouse. You think so? Yeah, fuck that guy. You can't hate Mickey people Mouse. Don't, people don't go to Disney World and hate Mickey Mouse. Yeah. You you hate like Donald Duck. You is hate the one you hate. You hate Pluto. You know. Yeah, yeah. No Pluto. You like Donald Duck, man. Oh uh, yeah, or Donald Duck or something. Yeah. Pluto. Oh, you mean the naked Goofy? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it has always been weird that a dog has a dog Gosh. and one of them wears clothes yeah specifically pants yeah the duck doesn't wear pants though i don't understand no it's he's, he's got it all out there for everybody to see <laughs> um i i think you don't have to go where vegas went on this like vegas went hard on the size and obviously mm -hmm. but what, what vegas did and i think this is intelligent um is they decided sort of what they were and they committed to it yeah, and when they and when it didn't work the they made changes yeah like, like the thing was, they went to the Stanley Cup final, and and I know that they've and I've I've made fun of them for this, and 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 said you know they're kind of shitty. They are fucking ruthless. That team, they are ruthless. There oh, is zero loyalty. We, you're there for eighteen months, and you're gone. Do we want to spend time uh, a little bit of time on how they might be the most hated franchise in the National Hockey League sure. right now? Well, I was gonna say <laughs> it might be a battle between the two dirtiest teams in the league. Honestly, I just think mm -hmm. what, but like you look at what they did with how they move players out and how many players signed extensions and they're like, nah, fuck off, get out of here. Um, but, you know, you end up with guys like Alex Petrangelo because mm -hmm. of it. He's a difference maker, man. He is. He was the best player when Montreal and Vegas played each other uh, a couple of years ago in the Eastern Conference, or sorry, in the, in the whatever best, conference best final. Best player on the ice. He was the best player on the ice on a, on a team. Uh, he was dragging Vegas along. Mark Stone, useless. Chandler Stevenson, mm -hmm. injured. Uh, like, and that was their number one center. They... It, it was Petrangelo or nothing. That mm -hmm. uh, stone line was one of the biggest disappointments. Wasn't it? Was it him, Stevenson, and Pacioretty? It might have been Pacioretty. It was so disappointing. It's bad. Mm -hmm. It's bad. So, Sorry, Jesse, what were you going to say? A lot of it really came to a head and blew up with the Marc Andre Fleury situation. Like, that's yeah. where we really started to understand that players there. Aren't, weren't really happy with how the front office just churns out players. Well, because the they were getting lied to. Yeah. He won the Vezina and got traded for nothing. That's kind of tough. Yeah. And it, it's it's yeah. trickled down to the fan bases across the league who look at the, the way they, they've run their franchise since joining the league where they're, they're always taking advantage of the LTIR situation, which is a thing you're allowed to do. Yeah. All yep. teams can do it. Yep. It's, they're just skirting the rules a little. Stop but telling me they didn't do it. It's embarrassing. Yeah, they're allowed to do it, though. So. Yep. And they're not very well liked amongst <laughs> the other fan bases. And there are justified reasons and how they're treating players. But they've also been extremely successful in every step of the way. And uh, slowly, this this playoffs, like Ivan Barbashev, I was trying to look up what they moved him for. He has become like my favorite player just on the impact he has yep. in every aspect of the game. And they traded him for Zach Dean. And it might be the most it might end up being the most important trade that happened in 22, 23. It's a Zach Dean for Ivan Barbashev. And now he's like their third most important player. Where was playoffs. Zach Dean drafted? I need to know this. Zach Dean was a round one pick Ugh. by the Vegas Golden Knights in 2021. That's well, and they hate those. They hate <laughs> those. <laughs> yeah, they just fire them all they out. Those. Yeah. yeah. What percent? What percent of their first round picks do they still have? I would love to know. Like of the guys they've ever drafted? Yeah. Well, they have three first them. round, uh, three first round picks. Mm -hmm. Go to hockey DB. It'd be better. Go, uh, go to. They have three first round picks. Twenty seventeen. Got rid of all of them. Uh, who is it? Glass. CC or CC. Mm -hmm. CC. Am I okay? Uh, Suzuki and. Uh, Fucking 
uh, Brandstrom. Mm-hmm. All of them. All of them. They got rid of all of them. So as much as we hate the organization, they win. And I guess that's that's what comes with being the evil empire. You know, you hate the Patriots and the way Bill Belichick uh, threw out players a yeah. year ahead of time because he knew in a year they're not going to be good. And he had no loyalty to anybody. And all they did was win. Well, for two decades. Also, I don't hate the Vegas Golden Knights. I just think sometimes when you lie to people, you should expect that they're going to be pissed about it. It's yeah. it's a copycat league, and the new style is going to be treat players like shit <laughs> and win and, and win. win. <laughs> uh, so. Or if the Panthers win, it'll be t- treat other teams like shit and win. Oh, and they're d- very good at that. What do you uh. guys think of the end of the game scuffle? Eh, it's just <laughs> what they got to do. It's what they got to do. They're, Should I hold the Steve with around like his his neck and then Adam can just punch him? Yeah. This this uh, <laughs> so I said this and I th- and I thought about it. You ever say something so flagrant uh, that you go, "Ooh, I now that I say it out loud, I think I need to think about that again." And I still mean it. Um, I said it's not hard to do what Sam Bennett does, and I thought about that <laughs> because I thought, "Ooh, that felt harsh." And I thought about it. No, it's not. So there are things he does that are hard. It's hard to show up every night and be the guy taxed with going into the corners and winning every battle and hitting the other team's star players. It is harder, far harder, far more difficult to play that role within the rules which he doesn't at all. And I just, I can't respect him. Um, The dude sucker punches and slams and does whatever the fuck he wants. You know how much easier every sport would be if you could just do whatever the fuck you want. (laughs) Every sport is easier. Like every sport has rules, right? So uh, I I was watching a a clip. um, uh, Draymond Green and Steve Kerr on Draymond Green's podcast, the NBA is just such a much better league. Um, they were talking about the adjustments the Miami Heat had to make to cover the Denver Nuggets. Yep. And they basically looked at it and said, well, Nikola Jokic is dominating us, but he's going to dominate us no matter what we do. So we need to shut down Jamal Murray. You could shut down him, uh, Jamal Murray with strategy and change up the way you're playing. Or I got a great idea. What if we beat the shit out of him. <laughs> what if we simply grab him and beat the shit out of him? Yeah. And then once I'm done grabbing and beating the yeah. shit out of him, my teammate comes and sucker punches him from behind. Oh, fuck. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> why didn't I think of just breaking every rule and beating the shit out of my opponent? Well, it seems to it works for Boston for years. I don't know why the Leafs yeah. haven't attempted it. Remember that dude? Um... Who uh, remember that dude who hit the the hole in one a couple weeks ago? Yeah. What if Rory McIlroy, who was partnered with him, just beat the shit out of him? Just take a golf club to his fucking Rory's, ankle. Rory's got some muscles too. He man. does got some muscles. Why shape. don't you use it to just? You're competing with the guy. What are you a wuss? You're competing with him. Beat the shit out of him. Simply beat the shit out of him. Hey, instead of throwing strikes. Just bean every opponent in the head until there aren't any more. Just do that. Matthew Kachuk said that he knew that they would get through the Leafs because they were going to wear them down. It wasn't game one, two, and three. It was game four, five, and six. Oh, this isn't about the Leafs. And I want to. Leafs lost. And and, and they did the same thing to Boston, they did the same thing to Carolina. I don't know that you can do that to Vegas based on how big these guys are. No, I agree. But you're making a point about Sam Bennett and that he doesn't care. But I I think Vegas has some non caring guys too. No, they do. And that's the thing. They can match the Vegas shit. Are not innocent in this. No, but I'm saying that I don't. I just I I think that he may have met his match. Oh, I agree. Well, and this is what the league rewards is yeah. <laughs> is well, and because in the regular season there's rules, and in the playoffs it's simply who can beat the shit out of. And people are like, I'd love this guy for my team, and I love that. Yeah, of course. Of course you would, because that's who wins in the playoffs, because in the playoffs, nothing matters. It's who can beat each other up and also get a save. Like, I'm sitting there. You also need to get a save sometimes. I get so existential when this shit happens, because I'm sitting there and I'm like, hey, 
when Mark Stahl held Nick Haig and Matthew Kachuk punched him in the face repeatedly, <laughs> and then when Haig broke free, Sam Bennett sucker punched him. Mm-hmm. I that was bad. I'm, it was and like, I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, but I basically said, "Hey, restraining your opponent and then beating the shit out of them, and then once they break those restraints, someone else beats the shit out of them is bad." And people f- responded with, "No." And there's something wrong with me. There is. And I'm I'm the, <laughs> like like I have you're the a problem. weak opinion. You're the no, problem. No, your opinion is weak. You're anti sporting and therefore anti hockey. It's a game with fucking rules and if you cannot beat me by playing within those rules, you are the weaker player. That's how this works. If if you can't beat him in the alley, you can't beat him on the ice. That is a quote from Con Smythe from like the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. It's been like a hundred fucking years since he said that. Mm-hmm. So some people would argue with you in that Sam Bennett and Matthew Kachuk got 10 minute game misconducts. Oh, so shiver me fucking timbers. Not they only got, they got to sit out that the, the game had ended, but they got to sit it out anyway. Yeah, there's four minutes and 24 seconds left. So they broke the rules and were penalized for it under the rules where that is your punishment for what you do. The Florida Panthers decided the game was over. And so they stopped yeah, playing. They were mad because they were down four two. Yeah. And they started hitting people and then they got punished. They didn't do this in the first period. Yeah, they were upset. They got Jamie Ben at least had the common courtesy to be a moron and do it in the first two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! Why did why didn't he simply wait until the end of the game when it's fine? Jamie Ben does what he did to Mark Stone in the third period. Not even a fine. No, even no, a fine. no. I'd put money on it. No, I'd put fucking he got money. Two on games. It. He does it in the he third period. a man in the face he does when it he was the third on the period, ice. Period. He might not even get called. You're going too far. I, no, I'm not going too far. I've watched too much hockey. Petro got one. Yeah. That's still the most psychotic decision in these plays. No, it's the nurse one. Yeah, the nurse when one is the one. two willing combatants are fighting and he gets a game. Even, okay, so I think that call kind of sucked yeah but even that i'm like okay on a technicality fine sure. but for the league to look at what nurse did with Hague and what petro did with uh, uh dry sidle and say these are the same yeah yeah no i get that not a league in the slightest I agree. and and again so to bring it back to the rules conversation and you are weaker if you can't play within the rules the edmonton oilers mm-hmm. were beating the Vegas Golden Knights in that game. And Petrangelo decided, I can't beat them fair and square tonight. So I'm going to try to simply break one of his limbs. Yep. I think that seems fair. And trying to break the limbs of an opponent, let alone the leading goal scorer in the league, is one game. It's one game. I'd like to know what your the problem The league's with never been is. safer, by the way, according to Gary Bettman. They should just shut off his mic at every press conference. Shut the fuck up. No, this the thing with Gary is it's it's not never listen to what he says. Just listen to what he does. Yeah, no, we're not covering the press conference. Who I'd cares? love to. The words literally don't. Blah, 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 blah. If they ever gave us. Adam, do your Gary Bretman. And then people go, I'm going to tweet about this. And it's like, man, I'm guilty of it. Pull string commission. Do we get a skit of Steve as Ron McLean and Adam as Gary Bettman? No. No. No, I, I don't. Do I don't want to. I don't want to depress order. people. Like, uh, I don't want to depress people. I think. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I think it's bad. Now, listen, man. Uh, uh, Gary, here's what. Here's what you need to know with the Gary Bettman press conference. The only thing you need to know is that he's saying the salary cap won't go up or whatever, whatever it was he was saying. Mm-hmm. Um, and in ha- the same breath, said they made six billion dollars. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, but that's whatever. what they made the year. They're making more money now than they were, and last year they did too, mm-hmm. more money than they money. did pre-pandemic. Yep. And yep. and so here's what you need to know, and this is really important that you pay attention to, Stephen. <laughs> do I have your attention? Sure do. Gary Bettman wants to extract did something. Somebody <laughs> say- <laughs> <laughs> You're such an asshole. Ah. <laughs> uh, he wants to take something from the from the NHLPA. I don't know what it is, but he is trying to use this as a negotiating technique. He they can they can they can put the salary cap up 
uh, four or five million bucks this year. The Players Association only owes the NHL 50 million bucks. That'll get paid in October. That will be like, so the billion dollars that they owed them, they've paid it off like a couple years faster than they thought. That 50 million bucks the PA still owes, apparently, apparently still owes, will be taken care of in October next year or this this coming season. So there's no reason why the owners who are pressuring Gary from everything we're hearing behind the scenes, the interesting part is that the owners, especially of the big clubs, especially of the clubs that are on the executive council, your Chicago's, your Montreal's, your Boston's, are threatening and saying, Gary, we want more money to spend. Why can we not put the cup? So what Gary is, and he is holding them at the gate and saying, no, we can get something for the PA for this. And from what I have heard, the PA are not budging. They're saying, no, why, why would we do that? We'll just wait. We'll just wait. I'm not giving you anything. He's trying to get, he's trying to get something from them. I don't know what it is, but I think it's either, it's some sort of, I bet it has something to do with the Olympics or the World Cup or something like that. Or hockey related revenue percentage. Yeah. Because he wants to change that. If the NHLPA does something even sort of kind of useful, I will buy a cake that says congrats on useful. And we will display it here for an entire show before I eat it. The only way that happens <laughs> is if the salary cap doesn't go up. And I'm not talking about the million bucks that it goes up, the token million bucks. I'm talking about if it goes up to four or five million bucks and a deal was struck with the NHL, then you can't buy the cake. If it goes up a million bucks and nothing happens, then you can, then you can buy the cake. Listen, you just tell me when I can buy the congrats on useful cake. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'll let you know. I'm just saying, you want that's uh, Gary's Gary's in yeah. negotiations right now. That's what's Do you happening. not? All the time, yeah. 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 It just sounds like you got a hankering for some cake. Has anyone ever been like, Jesse, here's some cake, and you went, Ugh, no. <laughs> yeah, if it's bad cake. What, when? Where did you find this? Oh, there's bad cake. There's bad cake. There's lots like, of bad cake. A friend offered you bad cake? Yeah. Yeah, if somebody offered me, it's like, not a friend. I don't know. Criminal. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan. Carrot cake is good if you make a good carrot cake. You know, but there are bad carrot cakes. I, I, I understand. You know, like if, if they do the icing and everything right, I'll be like, oh, that looks like good carrot cake. But like there's some carrot cakes that are just like vegetables. You know, I'm like, that's barely carrot cake. You don't want like to bread. taste the fact that it's a vegetable. Yeah, I want it to taste like I want to disguise the fact that it's carrot cake. Yeah, we're way far from whatever we're talking about. Anyway, listen, <laughs> some people are going to have a problem with what I said about the rules and don't break the rules. Mm-hmm. Don't call me names. Uh I don't know. Call him. Make, make a compelling argument. Call him a big stupid doo doo head. Uh, make a compelling argument against it. Um, in my experience, no one's come up with one yet. Yes, Jesse. but I am fat. The Gary Bettman press conference. Last thing on that, and I guess we're done with Stanley Cup final as well. Um, he did have other piece of news that he broke during that interview. Uh, it was the uh, Hockey Canada investigation. The results of it are coming during the summer after the Stanley Cup final. Yes, as we told you they would. And that is clearly because there are details within that that would disrupt the regular season and then the playoffs and and now the Stanley Cup final. So they've clearly delayed the report to come out during uh, the month of July when less people are paying attention to hockey and all of the reporters are away. And it's it's not insignificant that a player involved with that team is playing in the Stanley Cup they, final. They wrapped they wrapped these the, the this investigation months ago, guys. M- investigations don't take this long. Go ahead, Steve. Don't well don't be ignorant to that fact. I I don't know about that, but it's, oh, as soon as the season is done. Um, as soon as the draft and free agency are done. That's what it'll be. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying there's a scenario where someone scores or assists on the Stanley Cup winning goal that I think the NHL is just crossing their fingers and toes and hoping and praying doesn't happen. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So uh, with that, do we want to do a press conference today? Sure. All right, let's do it. Let's. Did somebody say press conference? The presser. No. They didn't? The Steve no. Dangle Press Conference. Are we uh, are we doing oh. this? The news? Oh yeah, I guess. Uh yeah, sorry. The 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 Ducks, by the way, have hired Greg Cronin, head coach, 36 years of experience. Uh Greg Cronin Cronin was the Leafs assistant coach between 2011 and 2014. Uh the the reason Verbeek went with this is because he wants a guy who can teach young players. NHL things. So we're just throwing that out there. Also, he worked on Randy Carlisle's staff, and the Ducks love Randy Carlisle. Yeah. Yeah. Ducks love a good Randy. All right. Hired him twice. Go ahead. Jesse. Um, 
<laughs> so Julian wants to tell you about his workplace or their workplace. Julian writes, Julian1124 on our Discord writes, can I share with you guys a GM parallel to the non-hockey working world? I am the GM of a large retail gym in Toronto. There are some decisions that I have to run by my boss. There are some decisions that I have to align with the company's strategy. But at least 90% of the time, I make and I'm responsible for the decisions. This seems to me exactly how the Dubis and Shanahan relationship works. On a massive decision, he needed to sign off from his boss, but most of the time, it's his work. I'm sure there are other situations where Andrew Berkshire needs your approval, but it's still his show. I think you guys should ease off the Brendan Shanahan is the de facto GM stuff. It's just not true. No, uh, you're right. Uh, he is the literal GM. Because Oh, wait, no, they hired a guy. So never mind. You're right. You're right. I was thinking in terms of last week when he was, in fact, the de facto GM because there wasn't one. Um, I would ease off if it were presented more honestly. If Brendan Shanahan or even Brad Treleving was just like, I, I think it'd come better from Brad Treleving if he was just like, well, I mean, you all have a boss. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Right. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I do. But they're like, nope. He, Brad, makes all the hockey decisions just like everyone before me. Well, we know that isn't true, though. We yeah, know that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. The, the difference is the way it's presented. Like, yeah, no, I know what it's like to have a boss. Thanks. But no, I, I do understand what you're saying. I don't think Shanahan is a cartoon villain who has tied a damsel to the train tracks. Um, you know, you, twirling his evil villain mustache but you know i think i think there's a little bit of underhandedness going on that's all i think no i think it's just power structure and it's like power structure dynamics matter and for dubis it was time to take the training wheels off and look at that he got fired and got a promotion yeah i'm i'm excited for the guy that he he's done such a good job that he got a seven-year contract out of nowhere the Penguins put that together fast. You you, you read the Myrtle piece this what? weekend? No, they liked him so much that they were like, burr, 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 here's seven years. <laughs> and they didn't think about it for months. Um, So Myrtle suggested, and we have talked about it on this show as well, that there are, there are whispers out there. And I put my tinfoil hat on to talk about it on the show. It fits you well. Um, it does. It's the only hat that fits me. Yeah. Uh, this head is enormous. You should but, have seen how many rolls of tinfoil. We but did. that the pe- penguins through back channeling made it known that, and this is all alleged, uh, made it known that if Dubas became available this summer, they'd be very interested and exactly what position they'd be interested in that sort of thing. Now, to prove this is near impossible. But this, as we told you, happens in the NHL all the time. I, I always sport. look at Jeremy Roenick. Jeremy Roenick signed a seven-year contract on July 1st with the Philadelphia Flyers at the time it was worth something like $36 million, which in today's dollars is still a lot of money. And um, and I remember thinking at the time, I'm like, that's a lot. And I was like a child. And I was like, how did they come together? Seven years right off the bat like that? It was crazy. And what's crazy is that Jeremy Roenick, who was not a Philadelphia Flyer or a Philadelphia resident, happened to be in Philadelphia that day for a press conference mid-morning. How does that... How does that happen? He wanted to see the Liberty Bell. He wanted to run up the steps. The Rocky statue. Yeah. Come on, guys. This is this happens all the time. Don't be surprised by it. Don't be upset by it. It is what it is. He wanted to see Xfinity Live in person. <laughs> it didn't exist. Um, uh, it didn't? I, I don't think Xfinity Live oh. existed in 2004. It's a, it's Maybe a it lovely facility. What's up, Jazzy? What's the next question? What do you guys think of the reports that if Sheldon Keefe is brought back, it most likely will come with an extension? I, I don't mind that. I think a, CJ was talking about that on the CJ show. I don't know if you guys heard that, but it's like, do you bring him back as a lame duck? And people people can, but like if the extension, if Keith is brought back as an extension, first off, the only thing it costs the Leafs is money. It's not like they can't fire him. And number two is that it gives him that little bit of security. And if the players start to try to tune the coach out, if he's on an expiring deal, they're like, well, fuck off. You're gone at the end of the year anyway. You kind of, I feel like you kind of need it with a coach. You do. Like, and I... It it jives with what Shanahan has done in the past. Yeah. Carlisle was a lame duck. Yep. He made him not a lame duck. Yep. And then he eventually had to fire him, which I'm sure was 
something he discussed with the board. Listen, I'm going to have to waste a little bit of your money here. I'm probably going to have to fire this guy. So either I fire him now and get a new guy, which no one's going to come here because no one wants to come here because we stink, or I extend him and fire him later and we go out and get someone else. And so they said, okay, do that one. And I think the Keith, the Keith extension, he'd be making the same amount of money anyway if he chose to sign it. I think I think they're okay. They're they're upset about having to pay Babcock as much money as they did for as long as they did. Um, Keith will not be getting that. <laughs> right. He won't be getting that term. He won't be getting that dollar amount. Don't worry about it. Um, do you guys want to cover the YouTuber who crashed a plane for views? What? <laughs> oh, yeah, I've heard this story. The guy's going to jail for 20 years, isn't he? He could face uh, up to 20 years. I thought he prison. was sentenced. Okay, you could have. Yeah. So he jumped out of his own airplane in rural California mm-hmm. for views. Okay, we need to stop. We need to stop. <laughs> Not the show. Like, oh, we, yeah, you the, did make it seem. The collective yeah, you we, the... the society. We need to stop. Because I, I had heard about this and there's some kid i want to say in the uk who is just walking into people's houses and shit because they leave the doors unlocked and he's just walking in mm-hmm. what the fuck are you doing what is everyone doing let me read the story to you uh if you have come across youtuber plane crash video or trevor jacob plane crash video and wondering if it is real if it is for real the answer is yes where does one stop in their attempt to gain views on social media the world of internet is twisted blah, blah, blah. youtuber trevor jacob an american snowboard cross competitor and extreme sports athlete is paying the price of a careless act the former aircraft pilot has pleaded guilty to deliberately crashing a plane for views and is now facing a sentence of 20 years in prison in 2021 he posted a youtube video in which jacob used to, uh, a parachute to escape a light aircraft claim, claiming engine failure. However, the YouTuber had deliberately crashed the plane. So I'm not going to play the video. He made it. So it was under the pretense that he was oh, flying. No, yes. I'm going to crash. I got to hop out. My engine's failing and he parachutes out of it and the plane crashes. The video is very dramatic. It's it's literally a plane crash video. And yeah, but he did it on purpose. I see. I thought it was under the guise of, hey, here's an old shitty plane. <laughs> I'm going to crash, crash it. it for. V- no, no. It was under. Hey, I'm in distress and I need to crash the crash. The, I need to hop out of this plane. And he just let it crash. Yeah, yeah. And who, like, listen, I'm I'm looking at the mountain range underneath them. What are the odds that that plane is going to hit someone? Probably low. Mm-hmm. But it's above zero. Yeah. What the fuck are you doing, man? Also, like, you're a pilot. Mm-hmm. That means you're, like, educated. Mm-hmm. That means you also have, like, expertise like you have a you have a skill yeah but not in not necessarily in um uh in in law <laughs> well no but that's what I this guess is what really I'm about saying is why did you need to do this like you, I, the views you didn't need the views you're a pilot a snowboarder slash pilot slash yeah i bet it's a lot you more have fun several skill sets yeah but now most people now he, the, he wanted to be a famous youtuber i assume he had a channel that was doing pretty well and he wanted to up it you know what steve if anybody knows the YouTube game, it's you as a stunt no, YouTube guy. You do it the way I did it. Be <laughs> shitty for like 10 years. No, no. And then sort of gain a little bit. <laughs> and then hope the Leafs lose so your views go up for oh, one single yeah. video. Every time. Because that's what it's about. It's about one video. Yeah. When when I got 12 <laughs> straight videos with over 100,000 views because the Leafs made it to the second round, I said, drat. (laughs) I really want them to lose so I can get 140,000 views. Damn it. (laughs) I wish they had lost. (laughs) Shut the valve right off. Steve. No, you know what? I I hope the Leafs lose so I can get to talking about the Vegas, Florida Stanley Cup final. No, you don't have to read the view. Where 37,000 people watched instead of 243. Okay. Um, Steve, as a stunt YouTuber, you should appreciate what Trevor has been doing. I am not a stunt YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, come on. You're the yelly, screaming guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, Jake Paul. Oh. Logan, uh, yeah, all the same. 
<laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, <laughs> no, no one. Yeah, I'm I'm the ghostwriter of all these. What if you jumped out of a plane? <laughs> hey, Jake, I heard of this forest. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's Logan. That's Logan. Uh, My bad. Yeah, and, be, and then he took all of January off, and which doesn't matter because January is when you make these money. prank YouTubers and TikTokers are out of control and need to fucking chill. It's almost, you know, what it was. It's it, like that. The the prank ones. Remember the the OG prank videos where it'd be like, this this guy could, uh, was fake. Ki- uh, they would fake kidnap people on the street. Oh yeah, like a, and then that, like, those were paid actors. And then yeah, and then there would be paid yeah. actors. And then also like all the reaction people were paid actors yeah. too, too. So they'd be like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. can you believe that terrorist just did that? Mm-hmm. But that's crazy. But the kids who like, grew up on that are now the in the mall TikTokers who are like. I push this guy on the escalator and they run away. Those people are fucking kids and doing this shit for real. It's an actual Chappelle sketch. You've been zapped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or no fucking. Um, oh, my God. Punked, right. Christopher Walken oh. on SNL. Well, I don't know. Also if I, know that the, one. I, I want to say he like shot someone. and He's like, oh, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> prank! <laughs> oh, prank! Oh, I got you. Uh, I have not seen that. Ah! I gotta see that. Anyways, uh, we're in a fucking we're in a dark time for prank TikTokers and YouTubers. <laughs> yeah, um, no, and they're all real though. <laughs> Very Hi. well. We the, asked, plane, the plane was real. That's why this guy could go to, go, yeah. go to jail. Yeah, we asked several of the hottest and dumbest people in the world. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> so, and they just all happen to be in the same place in yeah. front of our tiny microphone. Yeah, yeah, that's true. No, highly edited. Some paid actors. Um, Definitely. last thing this Thursday on a show called Nailing the Apex, that you can find on any podcast feed or on youtube.com slash sdpn there is going to be a big guest joining uh the host, Tim Herney. That big guest is is Gunther Steiner. Hey! Now, Steve Dangle, you don't know who this individual is, so Adam Wilde is going to... part of the uh, wrestling stable Imperium. He's not. No, Adam Wilde is going to take over and explain who this individual is and why this is a big deal for the network and for the show Nailing the Apex. He is a northern Italian, German-speaking, Italian-speaking team principal of Haas F1 team, the only American team on the grid from Gene Haas. Uh, who is a huge uh, American motor race guy. Um, And I think that uh, he is basically one of the standout stars of um, the Netflix series. Um, And he he wrote a book. I've read the book already. And it's basically a diary of a, a team boss like a general. It's like a team. But team principals in, in, in Formula One are like the GM and the coach. OK, so they run the budgets and they also coach the like it's a really intense job. And you're on the road 26, 27 weeks of the year. That's um, a lot of the it, weeks. It's a lot of the weeks. So, um, and he is Mr. Personality. He's hilarious. And I think this is why you need to watch this series is Gunther Steiner. Like you would love Gunther Steiner. Maybe that's what I need to do. You though. do need to watch that this summer. And 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 so Gunther is uh, a, a huge star. People come to F1 races with his face on their T-shirt. Not the drivers driving for him. Him. Um, uh, he's amazing, and I think this is going to be a great interview. I'm really excited. He might be the most well-known person to ever appear on the network, just because of the reach of F1 globally, yeah. as opposed to like the hockey people we well, had on. People, people, when we had Roman Grosjean on, oh, uh, yeah. Andy, people were like, people were like, that might be the most famous guest they've ever had. Yeah. What about Edge? Edge is North America. That, what about the no, hockey guy? no? Edge, Edge is a very good one. Yeah, yeah, because Edge but is I, a global superstar. Is he global? Yeah, okay. yeah. Like Edge will be huge in like. And nothing Japan. against Edge, but I'm like, like, no. how does it play in Europe and Asia? Re- right? Wrestling is huge in Asia. There you go. And okay. The, rest of the world. Well, there like, you go. I, Edge might be the biggest, but Gunther Steiner's up there. Yeah, he'd be. He. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Anyway, so. oh, he looks very famous. he's also hilarious you're gonna love him shut up (laughs) stop it Murano uh so yeah search up nailing the apex on your favorite podcast feed or on our youtube channel and go listen to that episode comes out um i don't know if it's dropping friday morning or thursday night so be on the lookout for that but yeah gunther on sdp okay hey all right so should we wrap it up okay you always should uh well well, crash a plane today, Adam. Get no. some views I for won't. us. I won't. I won't do it. And crash your mustache. Should, should we crash the collection? Should we crash the kayak for views? <laughs> hey! 
You know? What are we going to do for views on Wednesday? The Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Want to bet? Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.